Caroline Woods has got it all. Joining us from New York, uh, maybe let's chat some Apple first. Uh, Caroline, uh, shares not freaking out, but uh, you know, major C-suite sh uh, shift. Yeah, shares under a little bit of pressure on this executive shakeup. Long-serving CFO Luca Maestri is stepping down from his role as finance chief. Uh, that's effective January 1st, 2025. Now taking over will be Kevin Parekh. Uh, he's currently on the, the finance team. He's vice president of financial planning and analysis. Now, Apple said this is part of a planned succession. Parekh has been at Apple for 11 years. Before that, he was uh, at GM and Thomson Reuters. In a statement, CEO T Tim Cook said for more than a decade Kevin has been an indispensable member of Apple's finance leadership team and he understands the company inside out. Now Maestri will assist in the transition and it's important to note he's not actually leaving the company. He'll move on to lead the corporate services team including information systems and technology information security and real estate and development. He'll continue reporting to Apple CFO or I'm sorry Apple CEO Tim Cook. And, uh, you know, he's had that that uh, job since 2014, May of 2014, back when uh, Apple shares were trading at around $20 a share. But I think the fact that we're not seeing Apple under all that much pressure today, down about six tenths of a percent, likely is because he's uh, not actually leaving the company. So a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, you know, investors and shareholders don't have to, to worry all that much. It's similar to what we've seen with uh, quite a few other, uh, you know, transitioned kind of roles at Apple. People are, you know, leaving their roles but moving into other roles within the company. So shares down about six tenths of a percent uh, right now, but probably part of, uh, you know, the broader weakness that we're seeing in tech. All right. Uh, and some other positive analyst commentary this morning to keep the shares afloat. Uh, Bank of America puts a $256 price target reminder that they're still bullish on Apple. Morgan Stanley doing the same, holds a $273 price target. So a lot of analysts uh, that are still feeling pretty good about their bullish positioning. Okay, uh, let's maybe look at Meta since we're in the category of uh, the Giants here. And uh, as we go into and are already in election season, a uh, little uh, message from Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, tell me about it, uh, Caroline. Yeah, Mark Zuckerberg penned a letter to Congress alleging that the Biden administration put pressure on the social media giant to censor information related to COVID-19 back in 2021. He uh, re claims he regrets some of the decisions taken in response to those requests, also regrets not speaking about this sooner. In the letter to Chairman Jim Jordan and the House Judiciary Committee, which was posted on the committee's Facebook page dated uh, August 26 yesterday, uh, Zuckerberg said in 2021, senior officials from the Biden administration, including the White House, repeatedly pressured our teams for months to censor certain COVID-19 content, including humor and satire, and expressed a lot of frustration with our teams when we didn't agree. He added, I believe the government pressure was wrong, and I regret we were not more outspoken about it, adding, I also think we made some choices that, with the benefit of hindsight and new information, we wouldn't make today. So Zuckerberg said wow. he's ready to push back if something like this happens again. Now, I will say the White House responded in a, in a statement to Politico saying when confronted with a deadly pandemic, this administration encouraged responsible actions to protect public health and safety. Our position has been clear and consistent. We believe tech companies and other private actors should take into account the effects their actions have on the American people while making independent choices about the information they present. So, so yes, uh, they said yes. That was a statement to Politico. <laughs> so they said yes, we <laughs> but, did do that. I, you know, in that letter from Zuckerberg to the committee, he also uh, expressed regret for demoting some content not related to COVID, but related to uh, that New York Post story about Hunter Biden in 2020, ahead of the uh, 2020 election. Uh, the FBI had warned Meta that it could be linked to Russian disinformation. And Zuckerberg said it's since been made clear that the reporting was not Russian disinformation. And in retrospect, we shouldn't have demoted the story. So speaking out, you know, several years later about all of this really underscores the debate over, you know, how much social media companies sh should moderate content, if you will. But shares right now have met up down about six tenths of a percent. Again, likely linked to, uh, you know, some of the, the broader weakness that we're seeing in tech. But, you know, interesting 
It's an letter. interesting story. Uh, no, for sure. All these years later. Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, with uh, Musk and uh, X coming under fire uh, basically constantly, then uh, just a lot of, uh, you know, legal differences between here and uh, Europe in particular as we saw some of the pressure for uh, the X stuff. Uh, I guess Zuckerberg feeling like maybe he needs to step up and uh, make it clear that that was happening to him too. So uh, maybe building a little coalition of pushback. Uh, quite a response from the government. <laughs> it seems like basically the answer is yes, they did. Okay. All right. Uh, let's talk uh, Kava. This is kind of the more uh, uh, meaningful mover here this morning as there's a decent little sell-off after an incredible run. I guess it makes sense for some investors to take some profits at this point. Take some profits, yeah, especially when you're part of senior leadership and you have several shares that shares of Kava are down about 8% right now, a little more than 8%. The Mediterranean-themed restaurant chain, um, you know, recently posted earnings, has had this really impressive run-up, as you said, and now several corporate insiders and a major shareholder disclosed in filings that they're they're selling some of those holdings. According to this SEC filing, co-founder and CEO Brent Schulman sold more than 210,000 shares for almost $25 million. The other co-founder and chief concept officer sold more than 98,000 shares. That was for about 12 $4 million. The CFO, who was just on the, the show with Nicole yesterday, uh, sold 5,000 shares, which is worth about $628,000. And then uh, some board members sold 1,500 shares for more than 190000 And then there was a, a trust linked to another board member that sold about $628,000 worth of shares. Mm. And then in addition to this, um, uh, in a regulatory filing, Ardell Investment, or, or I'm sorry, Ardell International divested 6 million Kava shares worth around 732 million. Back in June, they also sold about 3 million shares worth about $262 million. So definitely cashing in on, on some of those really impressive profits. So Kava share is down almost 9% right now, but take a look, still up 167% year to date, still up about 36% this month alone after those upbeat earnings, as you said. So this is the stock that went public back in June of 2020, or I'm sorry, June of last year uh, here at the NYSE. Uh, it was quite the party here with lots of free food and uh, has seen this really impressive run up since up about 173 percent over the past one year. Yeah, or I guess that makes it understandable to want to take some profits uh, at the same time, though, you know, when they're out pounding the table on all their growth and where they're going and, you know, they've been public uh, for just over a, a year. I mean, it's uh, I don't know. It's uh, it's a pretty big sale between the CEO and CFO uh, to, to get to, um, you know, 20, uh, 25 plus, what was it, like 15? So, I mean, like $40 million of shares. It's not insignificant. Um, so, or co-founder, rather, was the one that sold the 13, 13 right. million. So between Both the CEO, yeah. yes, the co-founders. I mean, like, uh, it's a lot of shares. So I, I can see why the stock's down, responding to it, especially when they're pounding the table on all the growth and their potential, I mean, if you uh, are looking at the momentum of the stock over the last year and feeling good about it, then, you know, that 25 mil, why isn't he waiting to make it 50? You know, like I can see where people kind of ask questions after, you know, a year of public when they, when they start taking profits. I don't have uh, Shulman's, uh, you know, total share count that he actually has. So, he, you know, he may still be, you know, waiting for several of the other shares uh, to, to reach $50 million. I think that... True. I don't know. The shares were very close to the all-time highs, highs, now about 11% from those all-time highs. But I don't know if I had access to, to that. It, it yeah, you probably want to. Not to sell. And the numbers kind of speak for themselves, too. Though. I mean, they're pounding the table about the growth. But, you know, I think that the earnings really showed that growth in terms of, you know, double-digit revenue growth over 20% and such. So, um, you know, it's certainly there. It's like 10%. It's hard to capitalize on it. About 10% of his holdings, roughly, uh, according to Bloomberg data, as of uh, June 14th, uh, he had about uh, 1.6 million shares, which is roughly about 215 million or so, something like that. So, okay, he's still got plenty, uh, still invested and motivated, uh, fair to say, uh, with 100x million uh, dollars of shares. Uh, hey, let's talk Paramount real quick. Uh, Bronfman may uh, out, so where does that leave us? 
Yes, so Edgar, Edgar Bronfman Jr. withdrew his bid for the media company last night. Uh, in a statement, he said that the bidding group told the special committee that they were out, uh, saying, we continue to believe that Paramount Global is an extraordinary company with an unrivaled collection of marquee brands, assets, and people. While there have been many differences, we believe that everyone involved in the sale process is united in the belief that Paramount's best days are ahead. So I've seen reporting around Bronfman not actually being able to come up with equity financing for the bid after all. So therefore, the go shop period has ended with mm. respect to all parties. And this clears the way for Skydance Media to take over the media empire. So this Yay. might finally be over. According to Paramount, during the go shop period, the special committee contacted more than 50 third parties to determine whether they had an interest in making a proposal. Wow. Uh, they said that Paramount said, having thoroughly explored actionable op opportunities for Paramount over nearly eight months, our special committee continues to believe that the transaction we have agreed with Skydance delivers immediate value and the potential for continued participation in value creation in a rapidly evolving industry landscape. So the, tra the Skydance transaction is expected to close in the first half of 2025. Of course, it is subject to regulatory approvals and other customary closing conditions. But that go shop period is over. It seems like maybe the drama is coming to an end and uh, this deal could potentially go through if it gets approval. Okay. Yeah, it sounds like they went shopping indeed and it came up a little light. So um, put themselves out there, didn't find anyone else and then coming back uh, to the, the deal at hand. All right. Uh, so now we can uh, kind of maybe put it behind us now for all that uh thanks uh, for all I that they got stuck so with sad you love Sky that Dance. story no oh, <laughs> hate it absolutely the worst story ever okay <laughs> should note if paramount shares under pressure today down about five yeah percent. no that makes sense i mean i think they, they were really hyping up the potential to get another bidder uh, involved so and market had been you know banding that about for months and fact that they kind of come full circle back to their original uh, kind of like a most high probability partner and uh, is I think a little disappointment from the market's perspective so all right thanks Caroline appreciate it very much good stuff uh, great job taking us through a bunch of different stories there